If you spent any time on my channel before, you know that I am a lover of Apple products and clearly it's because I enjoy spending insane amounts of money on my laptops. <laughs> no, that's not true. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jordan and I'm a PhD student who also makes YouTube videos about artificial intelligence, emerging technologies, and machine learning, as well as my PhD life. Consider subscribing if you're new to my channel and leave a comment below with any videos that you'd love to see this year. All right, so if you've seen any of my past videos, especially the video that I did on my iPad Pro, you'll have probably noticed by now that my life is inextricably tied to the Apple ecosystem. Having said that, I actually used to use a Dell PC when I was in high school and only switched over to Apple when I was in college. And while my decision to switch over to Apple at the time actually had nothing to do with my interest in machine learning because I wasn't interested yet, there are actually five reasons why I continue to use Apple products as someone who does research in machine learning, neuroscience, and computational modeling. So the first reason has more to do with my decision to switch over to Macs in college, and that is essentially software compatibility. When I was starting to take engineering classes at Cornell, a lot of the programs that I was using for my courses only ran on Macs or were optimized for Macs. So it just made sense at the time to switch over to a MacBook Pro. I'd already been using an iPhone at the time and I think an iPod before that. So it seemed like it made sense to consolidate to one ecosystem, one operating system that could work for everything that I needed for class. And over time, this proved to be a generally very helpful decision on my part. So now I have the MacBook M1 MacBook Pro, I have an iPad Pro, I have the Apple Watch, I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, I have an Apple TV, I have HomePods. Essentially my entire life runs around the Apple ecosystem and so it makes it really easy for me to take notes for classes and keep a lab notebook on my iPad and then search and reference things on my laptop while also, you know, playing music or lecture notes on my TV, anything that essentially requires me to use a bunch of different systems interchangeably for both my research and for content creation. In fact, I've been thinking about making a video where I code exclusively on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. So if that would be an interesting video for all of you, definitely leave a comment below and I will attempt to make it at some point. Now, when it comes to machine learning specifically, the second reason why I use Apple is a bit unintuitive in the sense that it's essentially practicality in the sense that I don't actually need or want to train models locally on my laptop anyway. Ever since I started working in machine learning, I've always used remote servers to develop and train models. So there's really no reason for me to have, especially a desktop computer with the computing power to let me run models locally. I've never had a reason for that. It tends to be logistically easier to have some centralized server where I do these types of things so that I can access it wherever I happen to be. And because of that, it didn't really make sense to switch to another OS, to another hardware system, just in order to have maybe slight optimizations in running and training models and developing models and doing data science and coding more broadly, especially considering that there would be the learning curve of switching to a different OS and having to figure out how everything else works. Now, the third reason is actually more of, I guess, personal decision in the sense that Apple hardware, especially the latest Apple MacBooks, have a lot of interesting features that I just enjoy playing with. So that's things like the M1 chip, that's things like CreateML, which I did a video on where I made an app that checked my squat form. There's just a lot of interesting stuff that Apple's currently doing with like intelligent systems. And they make it pretty easy to play with things on the fly in ways that I haven't really found when using other operating systems. At the same time, there's often more open source, essentially software options for playing with things on platforms like Windows and Linux. So there are trade-offs in both directions, but for the stuff that I'm interested in playing with, it's usually stuff that I can get access to on any operating system. And so I just enjoy playing with whatever new features happen to be showing up on my computer at any given time. The fourth reason, which I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video in passing is essentially laziness, honestly. It would be a bit of a hassle for me at this point to move over to Windows or to Linux as my main computer. I know that I could dual boot this computer if I really wanted to, but 
for what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, it's just not really worth the extra hassle of putting in the work to switch over to something new when this system works perfectly well for all of my needs so far. And then my fifth reason is honestly kind of shallow, um, and it's essentially aesthetics and the user interface. So I always, even when I was using a Dell computer, I was not a fan of the aesthetics of that computer. It was big, it was bulky, it didn't really look all that good. I actually had my laptop when I did a photo shoot, I guess a year and a half ago now, and looking at those photos, it just, it looks nice. Like it's a nice looking computer. And because of that, and as a general rule for me, I, I tend to use things that I enjoy working with more when it comes to laptops, when it comes to various forms of technology, even if the product itself works really well, if I don't actually enjoy interacting with it on a day-to-day -day basis, then I'm a lot less likely to use it, which is why my lab desktop, which runs on Ubuntu, uh, has not been touched in about a year. And to be clear, I'm not saying that the aesthetics of your laptop should necessarily be a like huge factor in your choice on what kind of laptop to buy. You should definitely focus more on the specs that you need in order to get things that you want to do done. Having said that, as a semi-professional internet person, one of the specs that is actually somewhat helpful, if only a bit of an afterthought, is how things look on camera. And so when I'm thinking about my presence online, having a MacBook just looks nicer. <laughs> And speaking of upgrading your professional presence online, if you are in the market to do so, I'd highly recommend checking out Hover, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Hover makes it easy to buy all kinds of cool domains, whether you're looking to upgrade your personal website or build an online portfolio. Hover also has over 400 domain extensions, so if you're not satisfied with the standard .com domain, you can also get something a little bit more fun like .biz or .ai. Even if you don't need a website, you can use Hover to set up a custom email account, so I use at jordanhoward.com, which is also the domain that I use for my website, among others that I purchase more just for fun. And the entire process is super streamlined, making it easy for you to purchase a new domain whenever you need one. So whether you're planning on upgrading your professional presence online or just want a cool new email address, head over to hover.com slash jordanhoward to save 10% on your new domain. You can also check out my reviews of the M1, M1 Pro, and M1 Max chips up here. You can follow me on all my various socials down here, and otherwise I will see you all next week. Bye.